fellow students in this session let us discuss about salt stress and resistance mechanism of crystal stress in this series of salt physiology let's see what has happened in the last class what we discussed uh, in the previous sessions plants we have discussed about the plants stress they are uh, frequently subjected to various environmental stresses such as water drought and now in this uh, session let us consider the salt stress plants growing near the seashore and estuaries tolerate very high salt concentrations in the soil accumulation of salts in the soil from irrigation water also increases salt concentration so these are the two important places where there is high salt concentration is there and this increased salt stress especially accumulation of sodium chloride ions sodium and chloride ions actually results in the salinity of the soil and it may make the soil unsuitable for further cultivation and it is a serious matter of concern across the globe millions of acres of land have gone out of production about one third of irrigated land on earth is affected by salt stress the ions which gives or uh, increases the salinity or enhances salinity in the soil are sodium ion chloride carbonic acid potassium calcium magnesium and sulfate ions these ions contribute to soil salinity what are the effects just in a uh, general way let us see the effects of salt stress on plants what happens when there is excessive uptake of either sodium and chloride ion there is nutritional imbalance in the, in the cell and this leads to water stress and then it hampers growth and development of the plant when there is water stress it leads to cytotoxicity that is a very important thing which may kill the plant in future if the plants are continuously exposed to the salinity conditions this also induces oxidative stress there will be increase in the concentration of reactive oxygen species and some uh, of the salinity uh, tolerance mechanisms are uh, the appearance of the necrotic burn spots or uh, burns edge burns and necrotic spots on the leaves and chlorophyll bleach are common appearance if there is increased salt in the soil apart from that it also enhances the ion toxicity nutritional disorders alteration of metabolic processes genotoxicity membrane disorganization reduction of cell division at the same time along with the salt stress there will be water stress in the plants that is if salinity increases there is the water stress also is there which accompanies the salinity you can see various effects of salt stress here you can see this is the plant and if there is more number of ions there is increased salinity then what happens it inhibits first the foremost thing is seed germination then there will be growth is stunted or very uh, the growth is not up to the mark and in it, it inhibits cell elongation why there are there is stunted growth because of the inhibition of cell elongation then the, it leads to the harvest is less why because of increased sterility less pots less seed weight low yield and less harvest index this refers to the agricultural produce then why this is happening what, what is the result why these things are happening that is uh, less seed weight and low yield because of the following reasons because of the salt stress there is poor root growth there is nutritional imbalance and also it inhibits nutrient uptake and water uptake and on the aerial parts there will be leaf burning chlorosis and leaf senescence leaves will fall off soon because of this chloro uh, chlorosis and leaf burning the surface area for photosynthesis is reduced this results in 
low rate of photosynthesis or decline for photosynthesis there is closure of stomata and then there is decreased water content low osmotic potential all these things finally will result in low yield on the basis of the uh, response to high concentration of salts in the soil the plants are of two types halophytes they are native to saline soil there are two types urihaline species these urihaline species can resist a wide range of salt concentrations and then stenohaline species they have very narrow range of salt resistance and the second one is non halophytes or glycophytes they cannot resist salts to the same degree as halophytes and show growth inhibition the in, the growth is inhibited in uh, non halophytes when they are exposed to salinity there is leaf discoloration loss of dry weight and many other things which are along which takes place along with these conditions then the plants show resistance to increased salinity and also it tries to evade this one which are the mechanisms and how it is accomplished let us see here and this the plants cope with the salt stress or salinity in various ways it avoids or evades or tolerates and usually it is accomplished by limiting germination growth and reproduction to restricted specific seasons of the year by growing roots into non saline regions by limiting uptake of salts then salt evasion is done by achieving the accumulation of salts in specific cells of the plant or by secretion of excess salts from the plant you can see this is the surface of the plant desert plant tamarix pentandra there is heavy incrustations of salt you can see heavy incrustation of, of salt on the surface of the leaves as a result of excretion of excess salt the salt which are extra inside the leaves or inside the cells are excreted out and they are present on the surface they are present on the surface as salt in their uh, incrustations you can see salt incrustations and this are uh, the salt glands and salt incrustations you can observe here and then in the salt stress and elevation there is another example that is atriplex spongiosa this is also a desert plant a special salt glands are present these you can see these glands no these are salt glands and these have a long stalk like this and the terminal bladder on the surface of the leaves it has a long stalk and a terminal bladder on the surface of the leaves ions or stalk or our salts are transported to these glands and then after once it is transported they get concentrated there and they are crystallized glands fall these glands fall from the leaf surface these glands fall from the leaf surface leaving the rest of the leaf tissue with low salt content concentration or content so excess salt if present on the leaf surface will move to this uh, gland and then these gland will have high concentration of salts and they get crystallized and they fall off soon and this area leaf area will be of low salt content and then tolerance this is attained only in those plants where protoplasm can tolerate high salt content without any damage in functions uh, 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 normally so they will not be these plants will uh, tolerate high salinity uh, without any damage and then it will function normally the more there are three types the most solvent crops that is barley camelina rice safflower this is the safflower plant sunflower date palms and sugar beets and cotton is the second one is moderately plant, uh, tolerant salt plant that is cotton so cotton is moderately salt tolerant and then dry bean soya beans corn peas are a least salt tolerant plants see this is the corn plant and these plants are least tolerant to salt accumulation of proline enhances salt tolerance proline can scavenge reactive oxygen species and stabilize dna proteins and cell membranes and produce sodium chloride induced enzyme denaturation and another important finding nowadays is the role of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi or amfi which is a symbiotic fungi found in the roots of higher plants it imparts 
salinity tolerance by enhancing biomass. Higher biomass leads to dilution of sodium and chloride and there is better crop yield. Example is uh, trigonum pinum vicum. Vicum, you can just quote. And then how the soil tolerance is achieved by, or uh, it is given by uh, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi to the higher plant. It, it gives osmo protection, enhances photosynthetic efficiency, preserves cell ultrastructure, and thereby it brings in resistance. You can see this is the non-mycorrhizal plant and this is the mycorrhizal plant. There is high salt concentration and here also, but you can see the root growth and at the same time, these are the mycorrhizal hyphae, the blue ones, and then they give better protection to the plant and then the reactive oxygen species produced is less and then there is ion homeostasis taking place and then there is efficient antioxidant system here compared to the non-mycorrhizal plant. And then mechanism of salt tolerance may achieve by all these mechanical ways. Osmotic potential is maintained by accumulation of ions in the vacuole and synthesis of compatible solutes, accumulation of glycine betaine and sugar sorbitol, reorganization of cell structure and metabolism due to ion and osmotic effects. Ion homeostasis and compartmentalization, ion transport and uptake, biosynthesis of osmoprotectants and compatible solutes, activation of antioxidant enzymes and synthesis of antioxidant compounds, synthesis of polyamines, generation of nitric acid, common modulation are some of the mechanism of salt tolerance seen in plants. To summarize, See, the salt uh, concentration or salinity actually hampers the crop yield. When the crop yield is reduced, the whole economy of uh, a farmer and totally the economy of the country is reduced. So this salinity, increase in salinity has resulted in, has resulted in acres and acres of barren land across the globe. So this has to be reclaimed. And then this soil salinization is a great threat to agriculture. And then it, in, because it inhibits plant growth, finally reduces the yield. And high concentration of salt causes injuries, or that is called salt injuries. And at the same time, when there is high concentration of the salt in the soil, barren land is resulted. This will definitely imbalance the ecosystem and finally affecting the environment. And to cope up with this, there are several mechanisms of resistance by the plants which can be exploited uh, for use in the agricultural crops so that we can have better crops which can resist salinity and also can produce a better aid. So students, I think you have understood the uh, salt tolerance now. Let's crack some MCQs now. It's assumed that 20% of all cultivated land and almost half of all irrigated land is affected by heat stress, salt stress, drought stress, cold stress. It is by salt stress. You can see the 20% is quite a significant uh, number actually and all of us have to uh, concentrate on this and try to reduce this by creating awareness not to use much fertilizers, especially the chemical fertilizers. The next thing is soil tolerant plants show increased production of sorbitol, glucose, fructose, lactose. So what is the answer? The answer is asorbitol. Uh, next MCQ is Dash on dry beans, soybeans, corn, and peas. The, uh, that is least tolerant plants, moderate tolerant plants, high, high tolerant plants, none of the above. So what is the answer, students? They are least tolerant plants. These are the references. And thank you very much for your patient listening.